So one of the enormous advantages of mass production 3D printing is that you're able to make thick, chunky parts. Parts that could never be manufactured before because material properties wouldn't allow it through material shrinkage or just overall cost of the part because there'd be too much material wasted or thrown away if you were to make something big and chunky. But in order to go through and show how this is now possible with 3D printing, we're gonna show you some handles that you can mount up anywhere in your home with command strips. So before we get to the actual handles that you can mount around your home, let's actually start with something super basic. And this is actually just a handle for a bucket. This is a grip. It's a simple device that is meant to go over a wire or some other sort so that you can actually get a grip on it. While this is a trivial part, it is a cylinder with a curved slot through the middle. It is actually very difficult to manufacture traditionally because you would have to have a large brick of material that would then be carved away. Or if you were molding it, you actually couldn't because it's so thick that you would have shrinkage and deformation of the surface of the part. But since this part is 3D printed, the interior is basically hollow, so there's really not that much more material being used. You're still able to create a complex inner shape with that curve so that you can put the top of a bucket into this thing and not have to worry about it popping out as you go along. But it is actually a part that is still strong and durable. And then on top of that, we also applied a nice grippy surface to it so that it is comfortable to hold. This part, though trivial to look at initially, is actually very difficult to manufacture the old ways because it would actually be pretty expensive to put a slot into a big old dowel. But that is just the basic. So let's actually move on to something a little closer to home for everybody. Let's go ahead and look at a standard handle. So this handle would be like the grip that you would see on like an old fridge or something along those lines. The way we've designed it is the way we design many industrial types of parts is you have it print on its side so that all the layer lines are in plane so that it's super strong and as strong as any other part would be made. But we were actually able to make it very thick and chunky. There is a lot of surface area on this part, which again, contributes to the strength of it. When you have the strength in the skin, which is where most stresses are, you're able to create something really reliable. So this part is able to hold quite a bit. In fact, using this in practice, the failure point would actually be the point of adhesion. We designed this to be connected with command strips so that you can mount it up onto whatever you need a handle on. It might be the front of a fridge. It might be some box or something else that you just want to have a handle on, maybe a door or a closet door or anything else. However you want to mount it, you can. Now, the things we did do in order to design this a little bit better is since it is mounted via these command strips, we went ahead and gave it a forward positioning kind of foot right there so that they're mounted forward so the point of rotation is right there and you don't have leverage on the back that would cause them to peel up more easily. It's almost more of a direct pull rather than a twist. You can also notice that the sides of it are all chamfered. This allows the first layer to go down and to be very symmetric with the top layer. You don't have to worry about elephant footing or the first layer being odd or different. In addition, a nice little subtle piece that we were able to do is actually adding small indents to the back of this part that allow these command strips to match almost flush. And we would be able to change the depth of those. So based on the depth of whatever your adhesion device is, this appears to mount flush even though there is room for whatever the mounting system is. But again, this piece right here, if this was made with old manufacturing, it would be machined from a block of solid plastic. But this way, it's actually super lightweight. It has no heft to it at all. It literally weighs maybe a few dozen grams because this interior is entirely hollow, but you still have all of the structure because it's honeycombed inside of there. But now this handle could actually be mass produced without using a lot of raw materials and without being exceptionally expensive. Moving on from that a little bit further, this is kind of an evolution of the previous handle. This is a top grip style handle where you mount it up right there and then you're able to grab it like this or flip it around sideways, whatever it happens to be. This is a nice kind of barn door style handle. And again, chamfers all the way around the outer edges. It's printed like this so that it's as strong as it can be in the plane. Uh, you have a little bit of an issue with the mounting points right here because you do have quite a bit of torsion, whereas with that older one, you had the, the mounting points kind of moved forward. So that's something to be aware of if you're ever working with this type of hardware. But again, we really liked this shape, just the overall simple L shape right there. It's smooth, it's simple, and it's never really been able to be made before because what would have to happen is there'd have to be a big old giant cutout out the back of it that is full of ribs so that it still has structure, but it doesn't actually have a good grip point. And back in here would be all ribbed out or there'd be a big old slot through the side or something silly like that. But now you can produce thousands of these without a mold, without tooling, without 
a ton of waste. This comes off of a machine fully complete because you have the chamfers on the bottom. There is no support. Everything is enclosed. There's nothing really special about this. This type of hardware is a fantastic example of how to design accessories and add-ons and upgrades that look great, work great, and are something that could never exist before. Now, going on from that, there's a little bit of a twist of one here, and it's this. It looks like a brick, but that's kind of the intention. This is a side-mounted handle to where you can put it on the side of some box just like this, and then you have a grip up underneath, and you can see that grip right there. And again, it is a command strip style handle where again, we have those indents and that kind of thing. We also use the texture on the outside. So there's no way to really even tell that this was 3D printed. It is a very simple shape, but again, very chunky, very durable. And since it's such a low profile, it doesn't have a lot of torsion on the actual mount points. So you could actually mount this up with command strips and it's still very, very strong. But again, you could design it to have mount holes on there and look at our other videos talking about those types types of things so that you could actually screw this onto the side of some box or feature or product that you happen to be using. We liked the peel and stick because everybody has command strips inside of their home. So they're an easy way to just stick this up wherever you need it. Again, maybe the side of a toolbox, maybe some door handle, maybe the handle of a fridge or something along those lines. But we like this handle because it's very low profile. It's very simple. It's almost bordering on kind of elegant because people always went for thin stuff or ribbed things or whatever it happens to be in order to minimize material, but all of that minimization is able to happen under the skin in the honeycomb so you don't have to worry about the overall use of material when making a thick part that is very strong and durable. But we always use these videos, we always show the basic stuff. Everybody's seen a handle like this. They have existed before they've been carved out of steel and metal and wood and so on and so forth. But 3D printing lets you create things that could never exist before, geometries that could never exist before. So with that in mind, we made this. This one's a little bit different because this doesn't really look like a handle. It looks more like a wall hook or something like that. And what you can do with this is actually mount it on a corner so that you can put some handle on the side of a toolbox or the corner of a toolbox or something along those lines. And it's a type of handle that gives you a lot of grip. You could almost hook a chain or a rope through this and use it as some kind of a grommet on your ship or your boat or whatever it happens to be. And since it's so thick and so chunky, you have all the strength out in the outer skin to where you can't really break it off. This is a type of handle that we would actually encourage to be glued rather than mounted with screws because it is printed in this direction. And in fact, it's not actually printed this way, it's printed this way. And the reason it's printed upside down like this is that number one, you have minimum contact with the bed so that when a part is done, a machine can eject it and move on to the next one very easily. But it also ensures there are no overhangs. This hook is pointing upwards rather than pointing downwards, which would be the silly way of producing it because now you would have to have support underneath that hook. But if you make a very simple design decision and design change, you can now print it like this and it comes off the machine fully complete. And even though this could be machined or even molded, it's a fairly complex design, so it would be quite expensive and you'd have to cut ribs and chunks out of it in order to make sure that there weren't big old chunky side pieces that would shrink when the mold was done. So that is one of the odd ones that's almost unique uniquely 3D printed and can't really be made other ways. But let's take this a little bit further and let's actually look at this one. Number one, this gives you a nice context of like the texture and the color and the feel and also has the nice little interesting bit of these teeth on the inside here that you can see that are added on to give extra grip. This is an off center type of lifting handle to where you can put it on some beam or board, grab it like this and then you have friction on it and you can lift it up. These are really handy for like movers and that kind of thing. So it has to be really durable. In order to make sure it's durable, you make sure there's no stress concentrations by putting fillets in here. The reason we're using fillets or chamfers, apologies, chamfers in here, straight ones are chamfers, round ones are fillets, but the chamfers just look really good and go with the overall aesthetic because it is printed in this direction. The handle is on the bed so that it is all perfectly flat and the first layer is there and there are no weird overhangs. The center teeth are not actually perfectly round. They are less than a semicircle. They're pushed in just a little bit to make sure that there is no instant horizontal and then a curve. It goes right into a curve, kind of at an angle the first time it starts hitting one of these teeth, which is really important to make sure that these teeth don't sag when they're being printed. Overall, we have the texture around the outside, which can give better grip on the interior. If I was redoing this part, I would probably do it in a slightly tackier type of material, like maybe ASA or even nylon in order to make sure it's really durable and tough. 
though this piece would be able to hold up a person, and we'll probably do some shorts showing all of these things, holding up people and doing different types of tasks. Because again, when you look at the stress or the strength of a part, all of the stress always appears in the outer skin. So when I'm pulling up on this handle, the place it's gonna break is gonna start right here on the outside of it, and then the crack would go through. But since there is so much outer surface because you're able to make these really thick parts, that stress is spread out over a much wider area than it would be with like a molded piece where you would have ribs in here and then a thin skin that as soon as it breaks, it takes the whole thing. But this has so much more skin because it's fully enclosed to where it can be so much stronger. Now, that's all fine and dandy. Let's go one step a little bit further. One that's a little bit odd to make is actually this one. This little dome is literally just a bump to mount onto the side of something to give somebody extra grip, basically a climbing rock. It's not really that interesting, except for the fact that it's fully enclosed. You could maybe blow mold it, but then it would be totally hollow and would squash like a balloon. But having it 3D printed, you have internal structure, you have high rigidity, you have stiffness and toughness, and you can beat these things together and not really worry about anything. There's not give on it, it is durable, it's reliable. And we have the nice texture on the outside so it doesn't look printed, but this thick, chunky blob of otherwise would have been plastic that you'd have to slap against the floor is a hollow part that uses very few grams of material so it's very efficient to produce, but still has that exterior strength. So even though this is a stupid basic part, making a dome that is enclosed and has no ribs or anything else is actually kind of amazing and new and different. So even though it's simple and basic, much like the handle at the beginning, it is difficult to make before mass production 3D printing came along. Now, finally, the very last one that we've got was one that we just kind of did for the fun of it because it was a cool design and looked really nifty. And that is this handle right here. This handle is another side mount one, very much like the yellow one right here, where you would take it and you would shove it onto the side of whatever you want. Again, all these designed for command strips, so you put five or six or 12 command strips back there, shove it up against whatever you want. And then you have this nice grip right here. Again, just like with the other dome before, you have this really thick, massive part. This is literally about two inches of depth that would have to be solid material in the past, but is hollow in this case, but still has structure. It's a honeycomb, it's a composite uh, for all intents and purposes, a composite of one single material that has different macro structures inside of it. So this piece is very tough and very reliable. The one little trick with this is that even though the slot looks horizontal, it's actually going in at an angle so that there is no support inside of here. You actually have this angled roof and if we were doing it well, we'd almost give it kind of a smile to where it's domed perfectly so that you never have any kind of straight overhang. But that kind of messes with the ergonomics as well. This is a really nice handle to get a hold of when it's flat like that. But it also has a very wide back surface so that it's easy to mount up someplace with glue or with screws through the front if you wanted to. And it has this nice front dome that just kind of looks pretty nice. And of course, we applied the texture to the outer side so that it doesn't look like it's a printed part. The point of all of this is not just to show ways of designing handles that you might be able to use in your own projects or just get a hold of the files download and mount some handles up around your house if you have a fridge door that's broken. But this is to show that these handles actually are fantastic because they could not be made as efficiently as they are 10 years ago. The fact that they are basically hollow but still have structure means you use much less material. You're able to produce many more of these and you're able to do it much more affordably than you ever could before. A part like this was very difficult and very expensive to manufacture in the past just because it was chunky. But now because you have large print farms like ours here at Slant 3D or other options like that, you can make parts that are chunky, that are thick, that are strong, that are reliable, and that are smooth and have an aesthetic that you can never really hit before. And it's an opportunity to create products and create differentiation from your competitors that they may not have caught on to before. So that's the reason we do this, to show you new and interesting things that are now possible that weren't just a little while ago and give you some examples of how maybe you can use them in your products. Have a great day, everybody.